Chapter 2 is all about rational numbers. We're going to combine sections 1 and 2 and talk about adding and subtracting them. Three vocab words for you. Additive inverse, matrix, and element. The additive inverse is the opposite of a number. So a number and its additive inverse always have to add up to zero. So we already know the word opposite. That is the additive inverse of a number. Matrix is totally new. A matrix is a rectangular array of data. You're going to see later today that we box up matrices with brackets, and then we have numbers in them. And then an element is just one of those numbers in your matrix. So three objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to add rational numbers, to subtract rational numbers, and to use a matrix to add and subtract rational numbers. Now I know some of these problems are going to seem kind of easy, but for this chapter we will not be using calculators. So you have two properties of addition, the identity and the inverse, and they sound very similar, but the identity property of addition says that for every real number that we're going to deal with, n plus 0, n 0 plus n, always gives us n. So it's just saying that 0 is the identity because it doesn't matter what you add to it, you're always going to get the number that you started with. And then the inverse property of addition is kind of like the opposite of that. It says for every real number, there's an additive inverse such that when you add them together, you end up with 0. So 17 is the number, this negative 7 right here is its additive inverse because when you add them together, you end up with the identity, you end up with 0. So when you go to add rational numbers, there's two things that could happen. You could add numbers with the same sign, or you could have numbers with different signs. If you are adding numbers with the same sign, your answer is also going to have that sign. So positive 2 plus positive 6 is going to give you positive 8. Same thing if all of these were negative. Negative 2 plus negative 6 has to give you negative 8. So when the numbers are the same, you just add their absolute values. So here you just do 2 plus 6 to give me 8. Here again you're doing 2 plus 6 to give you 8, but because all of these signs are negative, your answer has to be negative. Now when your numbers have different signs, your answer is going to be the sign of the bigger number. So in this case it's negative 2 and 6. Since 6 is bigger, your answer is going to be positive. Same thing here, 6 is bigger but this time it's a negative 6, so your answer has to be negative. So you're finding the difference of their two absolute values for this one. So if we do some examples, find each sum negative 7 plus negative 4. Now both of the numbers are negative, so we know our answer is also going to be negative. And then think about what that means. You're 7 in the whole, and then you're going to take away 4 more. So if we add our two absolute values here, so 7 plus 4, that's going to give us 11. Now the next one, we have 26.3 and 8.9. Only one of them is negative, so you find the bigger number. In this case, it's the 26.3. So because his sign is negative, we know the answer to this is going to be negative. And then remember, we take the difference. So we need to find the difference between 26.3 and 8.9. So we can do some old school subtraction here. I'm going to turn this into a 5 and carry some 1's over. So 13 minus 9 is going to give me 4. Um, I can do 25 minus 8 now, and that will give me 17. And then we pull the decimal down. So we knew our answer was going to be negative, and now we know it's negative 17.4. Now this next one, again, both signs are exactly the same. They're both negative, so we know our answer has to be negative. And then we just add these up, 3 fourths plus 1 half. Now we can't add these because they don't have common denominators, but it's really easy to turn 1 half into something over 4. So pretend this was just 2 fourths. So now I can add 3 and 2, 
and end up with 5 fourths. But remember, since both of them are negative, we know our answer has to be negative 5 fourths. Last one. 8 ninths and negative 5 sixths. Now, to some people, it might not be obvious which number is bigger than the other one right now because our denominators are different. So let's change them to the common denominators first. If I have 8 over 9 and 5 over 6, think of a number that 9 and 6 can both go into. And the first one they can both go into is 18. So I want to turn both of these into something over 18. So I would have to multiply top and bottom by 2 here, so that will give me 16 eighteenths. And this I'd have to multiply by 3, so that will give me 15 eighteenths. So now we can see that 8 ninths is our bigger number here. So because this is positive, we know our answer has to be positive. And then we just take the difference between these. So we subtract them. If I do 16 minus 15, I'm going to end up with 1 eighteenth. Remember, it has to be positive. So a story problem. The temperature falls 15 degrees and then rises 18 degrees. Use addition to find the change in temperature. So we have two words here. Falls 16, or 15 degrees. That tells me that I'm going to have to subtract 15. And then it rises 18 degrees. So it's going to go up, or we're going to add 18. So now our numbers have opposite signs. Our answer is going to be the sign of the bigger one, so it's going to be positive. And then we just subtract. What's 18 minus 15? Just 3. So the change in temperature is 3 degrees. So now on to subtracting numbers. To subtract a number, all we're really doing is adding its opposite, and then we follow all the rules that we did with addition. So instead of saying 3 minus 5, what I'm really doing is 3 plus a negative 5. That's the opposite of 5. And then even like ones like this, I know most people say, oh, two negatives, that makes a positive. It's because we turn this to addition, and then we find the opposite of this number. And the opposite of negative 5 is 5. So find each difference. What this is really saying is negative 6 plus a negative 2. And just like the problems we did before, since the signs are the same, we know our answer has to be the same, and then all we have to do is add 6 and 2. So negative 8. This one we can rewrite. Instead of subtracting, we're going to add its opposite. So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. And then we have 12. Next one, same kind of thing. I have subtraction, so let's rewrite it. 3.7 plus the opposite of this number, which is positive 4.3. And then both of our signs are the same. They're both positive, so our answer is going to be positive. And then we can just add these. If you need to, you can draw yourself one of these. 7 plus 3 will give me 10, so we got to carry the 1. And then we end up with 8, so 8.0, and it has to be positive. Now the next one, same kind of thing. We have negative 8 ninths. We're going to change the subtraction to addition and then add its opposite here, which is positive 5, 6. And if you remember, we did that problem right here. 8 ninths plus a negative 5, 6. Only this time, our 8 ninths is the negative number. So we can kind of cheat and use what we did before. This time, because 8 ninths is, po or is negative, our answer has to be negative. But we already know what we get when we subtract 16 eighteenths and 15 eighteenths. So it's just going to be negative 1 eighteenth. So subtracting is basically addition with one more step. Last part, matrices. You can use matrices to add rational numbers. All a matrix it is is a rectangular arrangement of numbers. So we take something that's in a table, like this over here, and we get rid of all the words. 
and we just want these numbers here because we're going to add them to something, multiply them, subtract them, do something with them. So this over here becomes our matrix. And in our matrix, we have things called columns and things called rows. Columns always go up and down. Think of, like if you have a house, your columns are going to go up and down in your house. And rows go across. You identify the size of a matrix by looking at the number of rows and the number of columns. And it always gets identified as if you're making an L. So you count the number of columns first, and then you count the number of rows. So this right here goes down 1, 2, 3, over 2. So this is a 3 by 2 matrix. And then every item in a matrix is called an element. So an element is basically just the numbers in a matrix. So this is an element, this is an element, this is an element, on and on and on, just because it's a number in a matrix. Matrices are equal if the elements in corresponding positions are equal. So if you have two matrices set equal to each other, like this one here, this is saying negative 1 equals negative 1, which it does. And 4 equals 20 fifths, which it does. 0 equals 0, and 2 equals 4 halves. The way you can add matrices and subtract is if they're the same size. So you cannot add two matrices that are not the same size. And you just add the corresponding elements. So you add the two things in the same position. So if I had two matrices here, this guy and this guy would get added together. And then this guy and this guy would get added together. And then you get the idea because they're in corresponding spots, you add them together. So let's do some. Add some numbers together. So since they're in this matrix, I can only add the ones that correspond if the dimensions are the same. So this first one is a 2 by 2, and the second one is a 2 by 2. So I can add them together. And my answer also is a 2 by 2. So I have basically four spots to fill in here. So you just add the things that line up. So I'm going to add negative 5 plus negative 3. So numbers or signs are the same, so we know our answer is going to be negative also. And 5 plus 3 is just 8. So now the next one, 2.7 plus negative 3.9. So negative 3.9 is bigger. I know my answer is going to be negative. And then we can just subtract these. 3.9 minus 2.7. This gives me 2 and a 1, so 1.2. And then the next one, 7 plus a negative 4. So 7 is bigger. We know our answer is going to be positive. And then uh, 7 minus 4 gives us 3. Finally, the last one. Negative 3 plus 2, that's going to give us negative 1. So say those represented some data. It's useful to get rid of what the columns and the rows stand for, and you can just actually add the numbers up. So subtraction is very similar, except you have to watch your sign in the middle. So again, both of these are 2 by 2, so that means I can subtract them. And my answer is also going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. I'm going to have four numbers to fill in. So my first one, negative 3 minus a negative 5. Now be very careful. We know that makes a positive, but it's because we're really adding the inverse of this number. So that means my answer is going to be positive 2 here. Next one, 4 minus 6. 4 take away 6, remember, is really 4 plus a negative 6. So because 6 is bigger, my answer is going to be negative. And then the next one, 0 minus 9. That will give me negative 9. And finally, negative 1 minus negative 4. Again, write it out if you have to. So we know we're really adding here. So we end up with a positive number, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So. Can you? Prove it. Can you add rational numbers? Can you subtract rational numbers? 
and can you use matrices to add and subtract numbers?